My name is Greg Price. Uh, I've been an audio engineer for the better part of my life, really. Uh, this is my 43rd year, actually, as an engineer. I got started in the 70s. My brother and I had the garage band in the local neighborhood. So all the kids would come to our house, and we were the garage band. My brother went on to be in a band called Pablo Cruz. And when they started to really get traction, they hired me because I knew how to drive a truck. <laughs> but I could string a guitar and I knew how to play the piano. And so one thing leads to the other and I'm in the recording studio with them. And that was it. As soon as I saw the studio, the guys behind the console, the whole process that is involved in making records, I, I, I knew as a young man, that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. What makes me excited, it starts back in those days as a teenager, we wore out records listening to them over and over. How did they get that horn sound? Listen to the drums. My brother was a drummer, so we were completely enamored by drummers back in that time frame. So that's, that's the drive that gives, and I still enjoy music so much in that way. It's part of who I am. So when I get a new client, the first thing I do is get his or her records, and I listen to them over and over. And I really try to absorb their message, their vision of a life's work, basically. You put on Don Henley's records, he spent his whole life making these records. I want to represent that. You see my resume, everybody from Glenn Campbell to Ozzy Osbourne. So I've enjoyed and relished every single moment with every one of these artists. I think my most precious moments were in, re in the recording studios with Black Sabbath in Birmingham, England, in their original 1970s recording studio that they came out of. To be with them and record their songs was chilling. I'm gonna talk about the SR25 as an overhead cymbal mic. I have a matched pair of SR25s. Now we know that Earthworks makes measurement microphones. So think of it this way. I have a matched pair of measured mi measurement microphones for my cymbals. I've never been a big cymbal fan as a mixer and an engineer because I never liked the sound of them. I never thought that they'd had that quality that I was looking for in the cymbals until I put it a pair of match pair of SR25s up. With a kick drum and these two overhead mics, I don't need to add any other mics inputs into the drum kit. That's how powerful the overheads are in drum miking and it's so overlooked in the modern era of how we actually mic percussion. We've got drums. <laughs> We've got SR25s, and I have Brad Maddox standing next to me, my partner in Diablo Digital. Brad is going to demonstrate proper overhead mic technique. Brad? Thank you. Um, proper overhead miking technique live, specifically. So it might be a little different than what you do in a studio. Uh, to, and just to sort of elaborate on that, in studio, you might really try to get a pair of mics right, like, right over the drummer's head or right behind the drummer. Not realistic in a lot of live situations. Also, you're probably trying to get the mics like two and a half or three feet from the snare drum, which is also not realistic in a live situation. So this is our, our live solution for this. We're trying to record drums live, but sound studio-like. Right, so we're capturing the top of the kit uh, by, and, and what's critical about this mostly, the number one thing, is to get the two mics uh, equidistant from the center of the snare drum. Uh, it's the, the loudest thing, it's the thing that gets hit the most. It needs to arrive at the two mics at the same time. Uh, this really does make a big difference, both in the room live, but also for a post later, so that when you 
uh, take this to remix for um, whatever you're posting on, on YouTube or whatever you're Can doing. Can I just jump in of course. here? This is a really key point for young engineers. He is saying that the snare drum is the loudest thing on the drum kit, and this is so important. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't spend the time to actually listen to their source. It, it might be the loudest thing on the stage. It, but <laughs> you know what, he, he might have a good point there because those bands that play with just in-ear yeah. monitors, yeah. what do you hear? Yeah. Snare drum. Snare drum, yeah. So uh, fundamentally, this is about measuring uh, the distance from the center of the snare drum to each overhead mic and making it equal. Um, taking into account how far away above the cymbals uh, they also are. It's very, very typical on any given drum kit for the, a right-handed drummer, for the left side of the kit to be higher than the right. So you see here the ride cymbal is quite, quite low over here and the floor tom is quite low. Um, if Greg, uh, if you give me a hand here. Um, I like ideally to get 36 inches, but I find that's usually not gonna happen because it winds up being too close to the drummer and it gets hit. So Greg, if you could just move that mic like right to right there, let's give us a 40 inch, um, and then just bring it straight down to my, uh, there we go, a little further. Further down? A little further, yeah. And then we're gonna take that, we're gonna, this is where we're gonna start, we'll leave it at that. And we're gonna take the same measurement over to the other side. There's a couple other things about this that are sort of crucial to get this right. Uh, we all take our overhead mics and we pan them left and right. If this measurement... Is that the 40? Yeah, that's the 40. If this measurement's not the same for the snare drum, like if you just threw that mic up at the same height on the other side, a little further down there, yeah, then you would have uh, panned it left and right and you would have your snare drum bleeding into the overhead slightly off center. So it's... Uh, critical that you get that measurement correct. Now, standing back and looking at this, um, you can see right away this, this looks not kilter. Not symmetrical. But it is, does follow the path of the, of the drum kit, except for that symbol. So the symbol being, uh, let's we'll say this one is being 22 inches away from the mic, and this one's probably only about 18, or like 17. So I would suggest moving this mic over more towards the, uh, over the uh, ride symbol, and then we go back and match it up again. Like something like that? Yeah, maybe even a little further, like almost right over this floor tom. I like it. And measuring that again to get that floor, look at that, we're, we're on, we're right there. So now you have, you're closer. It's still a little, a little off, and you might fix this by moving that again, or even moving this mic over and down. What but you do want to accomplish is, first of all, evening out that bleed of the snare drum between these two things, getting, I'm almost going to go ahead and do this. Sure. Uh, getting these two mics, I, was, I often put this mic right over the hi-hat. You're going to get an equal, yeah, here we're looking good, we're getting an equal bleed between these cymbals. You're good over here. You're good over here, and we are slightly off on this one, so I'm gonna just take this over even a little bit more. There you go. I think what's key here is we watch Brad match. We have a set distance to the snare, mm -hmm. but he we've we've moved the mics in conjunction where the drummer has his cymbals, mm -hmm. and I'm with Brad. I like to have this off stage left overhead nearer the over over the uh, hi-hat than than say a, a downstage crash symbol yeah and you this is going to be this is going to be different for every drummer and every drum kit a yeah. little bit the the critical thing to keep in mind is the coherence of the snare leakage into the overheads the more or less equidistant uh, uh, distance from the overhead mics to the crash symbols especially um, and you can play with this. And also that they're not going to get hit is another thing that's critical. Right. I can imagine this mic being a problem for some drummers. Uh, you just got to ask. Right. If, it's, if they're cool with if it. Like I have a drummer on Florence and the Machine, and I have this mic right here. He never hits it. But he, mm. that's just how he plays. He's very slinky and low. So there's two keys here. S direction to the, s to the snare drum key 
We want to try to find parity to that snare drum. And as you can see, these mics do not look like they're perfectly placed over the drum kit, you know? They're matched the way the drum kit is set up. I, I would also, just for a laugh, why don't we make it look, make it so they look even? And let's check the, out what the difference actually is. That's, that means putting this mic. This goes like this. Kind of like here, right? That yeah. look about right? Does that look like it's even? Guess Hello. what? The distance from here to that snare is almost four feet as opposed to three and a half. So that half a foot difference is a wavelength out of phase that you're going to hear. You're going to hear It's going to perceive out. it as as a little bit weird. And it's also going to put the snare drum slightly out of center this way, I think. Is yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, maybe this way. Anyway, <laughs> it's going to be louder in this mic than it is in that mic. So um, the, what leakage you have with the overheads, the more you, if you try to bring those cymbals up or you like to compress overheads like I do, uh, it's going to take that snare drum out of the center of the mix. We went to see Fleetwood Mac the other night in an arena that I've probably done 20 shows in. Um, David Morgan was the mixer, and I was allowed to be on stage, and the drum kit and the percussion kit were littered with Earthworks mics. What was the final product? Some of the most brilliant and clear sounding percussion I've ever heard at a rock show. This is what we strive for. And I want to think that the Earthworks mics had a lot to do with that.